big round of applause for all of these wonderful, strong women. Thank you so much. You know, I, uh, I just want to say good afternoon to the women of Maryland. Don't they all look great in their pink and purple? How about a big round of applause for how wonderful they look? Hey, you are here today to kick off our, our Women for Hogan campaign, and I want to thank each and every one of you for being here this afternoon and for caring enough to be involved uh, in these important issues. And I'm thrilled to see so many of you dressed in pink and purple to highlight uh, awareness for breast cancer and for domestic violence, which is uh, both of them are in the month, month of October. Um, we wanted to shine a spotlight on these two crucial issues. And I wanted to uh, lend my full support uh, to bringing these uh, issues to light. Uh, throughout the month of October, the Hogan Rutherford campaign is going to go pink and purple. And if you notice this great campaign bus, look at those purple, pink and purple. Doesn't it look great? Look at the campaign bus. If you haven't already, um, please make sure that you pick up the ribbons that we're passing out today. And don't just wear them today, but every day for the rest of the month to help make more people aware. I'm really honored to be surrounded by so many distinguished women today, especially and including uh, my daughter Jamie. I'm very proud of her. Uh, everybody see that TV commercial that Jamie did? I'm really proud and thankful for her, for all of her support. Uh, and, and by the way, tomorrow is Jamie's birthday, so happy birthday, Jamie. I also really want to thank my friend, uh, County Executive Laura Newman, uh, Delegate Jeannie Hathaway, Bianca Aarons, and Buffy Giddens for taking the time to speak with us today. And they all deserve another round of applause. Very, very I'm especially pleased to have my running mate here with us today uh, with the purple shirt, looking good with his ribbon, the next <laughs> Lieutenant Governor of the State of Maryland. have Boyd on the team. He's going to make an incredible lieutenant governor. And uh, Boyd and I also want to thank our uh, tremendous wives, Yumi and Monica, for their strength, their love, and their support, and for both of them being here with us today. So October is designated as both Breast Cancer and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Uh, but we need to shine a spotlight on these two life or death issues, not just this month, but each and every day of the year. Now reflect on the color pink for a moment. It represents health and vitality. Think of the rosy pink cheeks of a newborn baby. Pink is the very antithesis uh, to cancer. And uh, this year alone, more than 230,000 cases of breast cancer will be diagnosed nationwide, and 4,700 of them will be diagnosed right here in Maryland. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, breast cancer in the United States is the most common cancer in women, no matter their race or ethnicity. It's the most common cause of death from cancer among Hispanic women. It's the second most common cause of death from cancer among white, black, and Asian women. Now, many Marylanders, men and women alike, are shocked to learn that there are now three counties in Maryland that don't even have a single OBGYN practitioner. That is simply unacceptable. When I have the honor of serving as your governor, I will work hard to ensure that every woman in our state has access to all the health care services she needs and that she won't have to cross county lines in order to get them. I'll also work to fix our broken budget and restore the millions of dollars that should be going, should be going towards breast and cervical cancer research and screening. When millions are cut from these vital services, that's a woman's issue. And when it, communities lose their tax base and can't afford to provide local health services, that's a women's issue too. Now as for the color purple, 
Well, in the U.S. military, the Purple Heart is presented to those who are wounded while serving our country. For those who have suffered domestic violence, who've been wounded emotionally or physically, the color is a symbol of peace, courage, and dedication to ending such violence. According to the Maryland Network Against Domestic Violence, as Buffy said, 54 people lost their lives to domestic violence in Maryland last year. And that's 54 too many. And that number doesn't include the thousands <coughs> of Marylanders who are physically or emotionally hurt by domestic violence each and every day here in Maryland. Over the last month, we've heard a lot of negative news coming out of the NFL, proving that domestic abuse knows no income or social status. It is a scourge on our society at all levels. That being said, numerous studies have shown that there is a link between unemployment and domestic violence. The sad reality is that when people are out of work and under financial strain, they're more likely to take out their frustrations on their spouses and their children. The sad truth is that unemployment in Maryland has doubled over the past eight years. And when we have 200,000 Marylanders out of work, we cannot ignore the ugly reality of domestic abuse. Also, as a group, women who lose their jobs are at greater risk for being battered. Studies have shown that women who become unemployed are more likely to be abused and to see an escalation in existing abuse. That is a terrible statistic. Tens of thousands of Maryland women have lost their jobs over the last eight years. And along with them, their employees sponsor health insurance and the women's services that it covered. Women are the heads of the majority of our state households, and they make most financial decisions for many families. When employers close their doors and tax hikes raise the prices of just about everything, many women have to choose between nutritious food, heating their homes, or clothing their children. The average Maryland family now pays $4,600 more per year in taxes and fees than they did eight years ago. And that will double to $9,200 over the next four years if we continue heading backward down this path. Make no mistake about it, restoring our economy is very much a women's issue, isn't it? Our economy has far-reaching consequences. It's not just bank accounts that are affected. The very core of our society and the family is weakened by an ever-weakening economy. When our economy suffers, our families suffer. And that breaks my heart. Unless we restore our economy, there will be even less money for the critical services that many women and their families so desperately need. Now, starting today, some new laws will take effect, a couple of which will improve protections from domestic violence. For one, people who commit domestic violence in front of a child now face an added penalty of up to five years in prison. That's a good law. Also, the standard of evidence for obtaining a final protective order will be reduced. That's a good move as well. Finally, second-degree assault will be added to crimes for which a person uh, can obtain a final protective order. All of those encouraging, or these new laws are encouraging, and I'm also really encouraged by the tremendous crowd that came out here today. Uh, and I want to thank all of those who use their voices to call attention to these problems of breast cancer and domestic violence. Uh, I hope that all of you here today will take the time to lend your support, your time, and your talents to the numerous organizations throughout our state that care for families affected by cancer, such as the Johns Hopkins Hospitals, Hackerman Pat's House, and the American Cancer Society's Cancer Action Network here in Maryland, as well as those who care for families who've suffered domestic abuse, including the House of Ruth, the YMCA, here in Anne Arundel County in Annapolis, and the various rape and sexual assault crisis centers in our counties and around the state that do such great work. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today. I want you to know 
that you have my strongest and most sincere commitment that as governor, I will do whatever I possibly can to assist in the fight against breast cancer and domestic violence. Thank you very much.